YouTube. I'm Crystal of CrystalSoulsAndStuff.com. Welcome back to the channel today. So today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite sewing tools that you can pick up on Amazon because um, we have Amazon Prime Day this week and so I just wanted to go ahead and share with you some of the things that you can pick up on Amazon. So the first couple of things are pressing tools. So the first thing I wanted to show you is what's called a tailor's ham. And this is like an oblong shape, um, kind of weighted object with foam and, and uh, probably sawdust. A lot of them are made with sawdust. I don't know exactly what's in this one. And this one is by Dritz. And what you use the tailor's ham for is to help you make nice curved seams like darts and shoulder seams. So this is great for sewing along a curve so you don't lose the curve in your seam so it won't come out flat. So that's what this is used for and it's cousin is the Taylor's roll or sausage so people call it a ham and sausage um, so anyway this is good for pressing out your side seams so you use this item just to you lay your seam here and then you press out your seam to get it nice and flat so you won't have any um, lumpy seams so those two kind of go hand in hand and along with the tailor's ham is um, a, ta a ham holder. Now this one is from Dritz, but they, I don't I haven't seen the Dritz one in a while. And but they do have one by Jackson Woodworks on Amazon that you can pick up, and it's all wood. And so what a ham holder does is it holds your ham, your tailor's ham. And so you put your tailor's ham into the ham holder. And you push, put your like shoulder seam or your fabric with the dart and you put it on there so you don't have to hold it down while you press. So this is a really a great useful tool to go with your tailor's hand. And another pressing supply is a sheer pressing cloth. I really like sheer fat pressing cloths because you can see your fabric as you're pressing out your seam but it still allows you to go ahead and pre protect your fabric while you're using your iron. So I really like a sheer pressing cloth. And the last, um, did I say that? Did I say, and then this is the Taylor's Clapper. Um, and this is used to make your seams a lot extra flat as well. So this is really good. And this is by Jackson Woodworks, like the same one as the ham holder that I mentioned before that's available on Amazon. So you can pick up both of those. And then to go with that, I like to use glass head pins. So these are pretty thin pins, but the ball, the ball on the pin doesn't melt. So it's really good for using along with your Taylor's ham and sausage or, or roll in order to get your seams flat so you don't have to move your um, pins out the way for pressing. So I'm going to show you a quick clip of how I use all of these <laughs> pressing tools together to press out um, a, a shoulder seam. So here's the clip. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to use this ham holder. So you put the ham holder here, then you put the tailor's ham in in it and then you put your shoulder seam over the curve like that and so and you can turn it a little bit I'm gonna show what I'm turning it so you can see it and then you take Then you take your glass head pins to help the seam lay flatter over the curve. So you do it like that. Then, so then you take your pressing cloth over it and then you Add your pressure like that, and then while it's still hot, you use your Taylor's clapper. And this is just basically a piece of wood 
that's smoothed out and it helps the steam soak in it's kind of magical okay and then that's how you get a nice curve and if you want if you get a little bit of dents with the pins you can just go ahead and press those back up okay and that is it and then you have and then you just keep going around until you have it the way you want it and then you with the sausage you kind of do the same thing and you do that for your side seams well, let's find a side seam on this jacket okay so you would just put it here on a side seam you can use your pins to get it flatter okay many as you want and then you can put your pressing cloth over it you can get your clapper bam clap on top like that and this is really great for your super heavy fabrics like wool and stuff and denim it helps get those you see how much flatter that is nice and flat so I love these pressing tools they make a big difference okay so that is how I use a Taylor's ham and ho ham holder and a clapper and a and a uh, press cloth as well as the glass head pins all together to press out a get a nice curve to a shoulder seam so I really recommend those products in order to um, get a nice even curve on your shoulders when you're um, sewn with um, I mean it just really helps it a lot so I really recommend those items. okay so the next thing that I wanted to share with you is our sewing books sewing books are um, Amazon first started off as a bookseller and so they do have a whole lot of great sewing books that you can add to your sewing book collection and so I'll show you a few of my favorites so one of my favorites if you've been following me for a while um, you would know that the Fit for Real People is one of my favorite sewing books. And this is a great sewing book for helping you learn how to um, fit patterns to your body. Because no two persons' bodies are the same. And most of us don't fit into a pattern straight out the wrapper. No matter how thin or um, tall you are or skinny you are. It doesn't matter. Most people are not a straight size. And even if you are, you still might have little adjustments that you might have to make you might have narrow shoulders you might have longer legs um a larger derriere <laughs> um a protruding tummy things like that um large bosom and this helps you make those kind of pattern adjustments um so this is a great um tool for getting you to use commercial patterns um or even uh indie patterns as well and how you but you would have to probably trace them out. But this is good for helping you use your pattern tissue to fit your patterns to your body. So I really recommend this book. And they also have a fit for um, fit for real people pants and jackets as well as knits. So they have a whole line of books for you to learn their tissue fitting method. And that's the method that I like to use. And so the next book that I wanted to show you is the complete Reader Digest Complete Guide to Sewing. Now Amazon, I picked this up at a used bookstore and this is a 1976 version. Um, but they do on Amazon, they have um, used books as well as brand new books as well. And this is a great resource and it has a lot of like your basic sewing skills that everybody should know. And so they really go and it has a lot of like really nice diagrams to help you learn how to sew and different techniques you might bump into that you don't know how to do. So this is a really good book. I really enjoyed the Reader's Digest Complete 
got the song. Now they have a newer version out. Um, I haven't used that one, but I do like this 1976 version. So, and then the last book that I wanted to share with you um, that I like is this Tilly and the Button stretch book. Now this is a great sewing book for sh for you to learn how to sew with knit fabrics, and then they have a lot of a few different patterns in the book for you to go ahead and sew up and she gives you deep great details about and i've made the bb skirt here and so this is one of the skirts that i've made up um so i really really love this book it's really a nice detailed sewing book on how to sew knits and she gives very good directions. So if you've never sewn with knits before, I highly suggest you go ahead and pick up this stretch book by Tilina Buttons. I also have her first book. Um, what's the name of it? Uh, Love at First Stitch. And so that that's another great book. And she has a third book as well. I don't have that one. But anyway, her books are very detailed. And um, they give you a lot of great tips and are great for beginners. So I highly recommend the Tilina Buttons books to you so books is the next the um next category after the pressing tools um that you can pick up things from amazon so the next category of items are scissors and my favorite sewing scissors are i have two companies that i love gingers and kai scissors and so the scissors that the main scissors that i use are these gingers and these are nice, um, just really, they have a nice weight to them. I have the kind with the spring, but Amazon has a, um, another, a ba more basic pair as well. And these are great because um, it's really easy to cut and they stay pretty sharp. So I really enjoy these and it comes with a little holder for the bottom of your scissors. So I really like these gingers. These are the ones I use for most of my cutting for fabric. And then I also use these duckbill scissors. And these are great for grading out your seams and just trimming your seams. They're um, like applique scissors. So they're great for cutting out if you want to write number seven and then you want to trim it down. This is great so you won't cut too close. So you always need smaller scissors as well as some bigger scissors. Um, the bigger scissors are good for cutting out long lengths of fabric. And then these are good for cutting out smaller areas. So you don't nip into your fabric by accident. So I really love these duckbill scissors. So I also have a, a two pair of scissors from Kai Scissors. And I really like these. I have the Taylor Shears. And these are nice hefty scissors. And these are great for cutting out really thick fabrics like for denim and stuff like that. But they are a little bit too long for me for cutting out just every day. But these are nice and sharp. I really like these for cutting out denim. And um, it comes in this nice little um, little sheath and it has a little cover for your scissors as for the bottom part as well. So these are the um, tailor shears. And then I also have a smaller pair. I also have a smaller pair of like five and a half inch scissors that I use for smaller areas as well. So I really like these. Um, it's kind of a tie between these and the applique scissors for me. I really like them pretty equally. So these I love, and these are with the N61, was it, 5165. So these are really nice um, scissors. I really enjoy these right here. Okay, so those are my um, fabric cutting scissors. So that's the next thing that you can really pick up on um, from Amazon are fabric uh, sewing scissors. So the next thing that I want to talk about is marking tools. So some of my favorite marking tools are these clover rollers. They're called Choco Liners. And they, um, they're really cool. You just roll them on your fabric and to mark your fabric, to mark um, where your darts are, snips. Um, so these are really nice for marking out notches and, your dart, and um, anything else you need to mark out. So really good for marking. And they come in a lot of different colors. And then this bottom part is chalk, chalk in the bottom. And it's refillable. So I really love these Choco liners. And then my other favorite marking tool are these 
friction pins. So Amazon sells them in like great big packs. So basically what they are are erasable pins. But the cool thing about them is that they disappear when you iron over them. So they're really cool um, for that purpose. And so like sometimes even like if you trace out a bird or pattern or you want to mark out your size, you can just trace back over it. You can just press back over it so you don't lose your size. Um, you can take, put it on your fabric and you just press over it and it disappears. So I love these friction pins. Um, so they're really great. So those are my favorite marking tools. And one more tool that's kind of a marking tool, and that is the Simflex. And this is a button um, gauge. And it's really good for helping you line up where you want to place your buttons on a, a garment. Because, like, I'm short, so a lot of times I have to shorten a pattern. And so I... If it comes with a button guide, it won't apply to me after I've made the adjustments. So in order to make sure my buttons are still going to be even, I'll use this to mark out where I want to put the buttons on my um, on shirts and shirt dresses and coats and things like that. So this is a very useful tool, and it's called the Simflex Seam Gauge. So, so the next category of items I wanted to talk about are rulers. And so they have a lot of different rulers on Amazon that you can pick up. But my favorite rulers, and if you've been following me for a while, you know, are these um, these curve, these French curve rulers from Stitch Buzz. They were once called Lunar Graphics, but she's since she's since changed her name. And these are French curve rulers from Stitch Buzz. But the cool thing about these are is that they're in um, one eighth increments. And so this is the five eighth ruler. This is the larger one. And then this is the smaller one. And so they both are great. Um, so this one gets your bigger curves. And, but it also has the smaller end where you can get smaller curves. I love the angle on it. And then you also have the smaller one I like because I like this curve. You can use the outside curve. You can use this inner curve. And then also the corner curve. So these are a great set. And I had the 5 8 inch um, set. And I picked mine up at sewing, in sewing class. But you can also pick it up on Amazon or on the um, Stitch Buzz website. Um, or, or at our Etsy store as well as on Amazon. So these are one of my favorite sewing tools that you can pick up and I think I want to go ahead and get the half inch version as well maybe even a 3 8 inch version as well because um a lot of the indie patterns are um are at half inch and then um there are a few that are at 3 8 inch so I might pick up a half inch curve ruler as well as um a 3 8 one and I'll probably get just this the smaller one for each of them but I don't know I might get all of them because I just love these I love these if these were if I ever lost these I would just go out and buy these right away because I just love these rulers so much they are my favorite ruler and then the other ruler that I like is um, just this Dritz uh, two inch ruler and they come in um, it shows you uh, eighth, eighth inch um, markings as well um, so I really like this one so really good ruler see-through so it's really good for helping you measure out things with your pattern so this is another one another one that I like so those are my favorite sewing rulers so the next category of items are things for pinning so I do like I said before love glass head pins I don't know I think I've said it but yeah so I do love glass head pins and these are the ultra head ultra fine glass head pins from Dritz, I do like Dritz glass head pins. And then also, I like these clips. These are clips from Clover. And so these are really nice clips. And I really enjoy using those. And they're good for, these the clips are good for holding like thicker fabrics together. And for good for when you're working with your serger and you don't want pins too close. So these are really great for holding your fabric together. And these are from Clover. And they come in a big, um, you can get them in a, like a little case like this. So I like that they come in this little case. So I recommend those. And then the last uh, couple of things, I have some other miscellaneous um, things that I like to pick up from 
Amazon and the first one are sewing pin. I mean needles, machine needles. And I like the Schmetz version Schmetz sewing needles for all of my sewing machines because they're just they're really good sturdy machines and my my machines tend to agree with the Schmetz um uh, so, uh, sewing machine needles and these are and they come you can get them in these big like hundred packs of machine needles so I like to get the 70s and the 80s because those are the ones that I use most are the 70 and 80 ones so I get those in these big um in these big uh, hundred pack ones and then I also like to get like microtex needles for sewing things like faux leather and things like that and you can get those in like a five pack of individual like square ones um, individual little packs and then you can also get jersey needles for your knits so I really like to buy my sewing needles in bulk and I keep them in this little container I think I got this at Target I'm not sure <laughs> but it has nice little sections for you to store all of your um, machine needles in. I mean, I don't think that's what this is for, but it does work perfectly for that. And then I also like to keep my bias tape makers in here. So I like to make bias tape for some of my um, shirts and things like that and dresses that require um, bias tape, like the Rhapsody dress and things like that um, require you to make your own bias tape. And so these bias tape makers are great and you can pick up bias tape makers um excuse me on amazon as well so and then just some other little knickknacks i do like to use this tracing wheel from clover i just like clover products in general um and then i wanted to show you <laughs> And then I also love the Clover Seam Rippers as well. So those are the only, those are the last things I wanted to show you. So that's, I believe that's everything sewing related I wanted to show you today. So the last little like non-sewing non tool thing that I keep in my sewing room is my Amazon Echo Dot. And I love this little thing. I never thought I would like it as much as I do, but um, you can just go ahead and play your music or you can listen to sewing podcasts. You can um, listen to audio books. You can do so much um, with this to keep you entertained while you're sewing. So I really like to um, have, you know, my music going on in the background. I like to listen to an audio book while I'm sewing. So those are some of the things that I like to do with the Amazon Echo Dot. And I'll just show you real quick. Alexa, play Love to Sew podcast. Getting Love to Sew podcast from Apple Podcasts. Playing the latest episode. Sewing loungewear. So those are the items that I love to pick up from Amazon. And so I'll leave a link in the description box to my sewing room faves page on my website. And I have them all listed on um, my website. And so those are our Amazon affiliate links. And if you decide to pick up some of the items from those links, those are affiliate links. And I receive a small commission if you make a purchase through those links. So thank you for your support. So now while you're over there, I have also created some of these fun sewing project worksheets. And these are cute worksheets that I've made up to help um, organize um, sewing projects. So there are three pages for the worksheets and some of the things on the worksheets are the project type. Um, you can put a picture, you can add a fabric swatch, you can write down where you purchased your fabric, the price of the fabric, the date you started, your notions that you'll need, and then you can also write down um, things in your wardrobe that you want to go with it. You can write down the accessories that you need to go with the um, garment, and then you can also write down your post-project notes. Like what size did you end up sewing, um, the picture of what you made, pattern changes that you made, and then you can write down your final thoughts. Like I hated this pattern, I love this pattern, I definitely want to sew 10 more of, of these patterns, of this pattern. So this is um, uh, some sewing project worksheets that I made up for anyone who decides to join my newsletter 
on my website. So anyway, go ahead and head over and check that out if you're interested in picking up these um, sewing project worksheets um, to print out for your next sewing project. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you won't miss any of my videos. So I thank you so much for stopping by today. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.